Hi everybody, Dr. Aulis here. In this short video, we're going to talk about the directional terms that we can use to describe structures in the body. When we talk about directional terms, the goal of using directional terms is to help us to compare body structures to each other. So anytime we're going to use a directional term, it's going to include us comparing one bone to another bone or one organ to another organ. We can never use a directional term by itself. They're always relative to each other. And when we talk about directional pair terms, we're always going to see them coming in pairs. These pairs are going to be opposites. For example, I have a term that means closer to the front side of the body, but I also have a term that means closer to the back side, or a term that means above and a term that means below. These pairs of directional terms are opposite of one another. So study pro tip for you. Learn the, the pairs or the sets of words that come in these pairs. When we talk about any of these directional terms, something for you to be familiar with is called the anatomical position. The anatomical position is the way that we're going to reference back to as we're comparing structures. Now, anatomical position is not the normal way that you stand up or that you sit. When we talk about anatomical position, the body is fully erect, meaning you're standing completely tall. Here's what makes things really awkward. The palms of your hands are facing forward. Usually when I stand up, I like my palms facing toward my body. But when I'm in anatomical position, I need those palms facing forward. That's going to be really important when we're defining the front side of, of the arms and the back side of the arms. And the same thing is true of the feet. They're pointed forward with a slight bit of space in between them. So anatomical position, if we were in class together, I would make everybody stand up and do it. The big thing to remember with anatomical position, the palms of your hands are facing forward. That's going to come into play when we start doing some of these directional terms. So let's start with the first set of directional terms, and this is something we actually talked about in class together. When we're comparing the left side and the right side of a person, of a model, remember that we have to put ourselves in the patient's shoes. Again, what I mean by that is if I look at this woman, my left side as I look at her is over here. And my right side, as I look at her, is over here. But for my patient, it's the opposite. And it's very important that we remember that. So left side for the patient, right side for the patient. If we're not classifying something as left and right, maybe we want to compare two things to the midline of the body. So the midline of your body is anything that's in the very middle, from the top of your body all the way down. If something is farther away from the midline of the body compared to something else, we would use the word lateral. Or if something is closer to the midline of the body, the word I use for that is medial. So as I'm looking at, at this person here, we'll go up to her head. I could say that the nose is medial, it's in the middle, compared to the ears. The nose is medial to the ears. I could also say though that the ears are lateral toward the outside compared to the nose. So the reason these come in pairs is because I can compare them in opposite ways. Lateral or medial, how close are we to the middle of the body? Superior and inferior have to do with how, how high or how low we are in the body. So when a structure is superior to another, we would say that it is above. That's my, my normal word for it. If something is inferior to another structure, that just means it's below. So let's go back to our ears up here. Let's say that we're comparing the ears to the hand. When I'm standing here in anatomical position, I would say that the ears are superior, they're above, the hand. Or I could say that the hand is inferior to the ears. The hand is below. So superior and inferior telling me if we're up or down. Lateral and medial toward the middle, toward the outside. 
The last one I want to mention from this page is the set of terms proximal and distal. I want you, even though it's here in bold, even though it's in italics, I want you to underline, highlight, star this statement right here. If I'm comparing two things on an arm or two things on a leg, I have to use the terms proximal and distal. This is because the arm and the leg have the ability to move, as you know, with things like a jumping jack. Because of that, to be most specific and most accurate with these, these parts of the body, we have their own special terms, proximal and distal. When I talk about something that's proximal, I mean that it's closer to the place where that, that arm or the place where that leg attaches to the body. So if I'm looking at two structures here on the leg, for example, in the thigh, I have a bone called the femur, and in your shin, we have a bone called the tibia. The femur is closer to the leg attachment than the tibia is. The femur is proximal to the tibia and vice versa. The tibia is farther away from the hip than the femur is. So the tibia is distal to the femur. Recap, we've got left and right. What's the side of things on our patient? We've got lateral and medial, toward the midline or away from the midline. We've got superior and inferior. Are you up or are you down? And finally, proximal and distal. How close are you either to the hip, like we talked about, or to the shoulder? A couple of other terms that I wanna introduce you to though are the terms anterior and posterior, which to be fully honest, are actually the same thing as ventral and dorsal. It's just another way of saying those things. So anterior and posterior, these directional terms are referring to which side of the body we're on. If a structure is anterior, it's closer to the front. If a structure is posterior, it's closer to the back. For example, in the middle of the chest, in that sternal region, we have a bone called the sternum on the very front side of the chest. If I wanna compare the sternum to the bones of the spine, the bones of the spine being the vertebrae, I could use these terms. So I would say that the sternum is anterior to the vertebrae. It's closer to the front of the body. Or I could say that the vertebrae are posterior to the sternum. They're toward the back side. They're in the back. These same rules apply to the terms ventral and dorsal. So literally, it's exactly the same. So here's how I'd recommend studying these. Learn that anterior and posterior are opposites. That's job number one. Then learn that anterior and ventral mean the same thing. Posterior and dorsal mean the same thing. If we know that, we're set on these front and back terms. I'll mention, just because they continue to be labeled on our picture here, above and below for superior and inferior. And remember, when we talk about those limbs, proximal and distal. This would apply to me making a comparison, like we did before, between the femur and the tibia. This would also apply if I was comparing the fingers to the forearm or the fingers to the arm or even to the shoulder. The shoulder is always going to be proximal to anything else that's here on the arm. Just like the fingers will always be distal to anything else on the arm. So think of proximal at the attachment point at the shoulder or at the hip and distal as far away as we can get, the fingers or the toes. As you're processing uh, these directional terms and how to use them, take a moment to try to apply them in, in a practice activity. The way that I like to, to think about these directional terms, the way I want you to approach this, 
there's this idea of KISS, K-I-S-S. K-I-S-S stands for keep it simple, student. Whatever the most obvious relationship between two things is, that's the directional term we're looking for. So for example, if I'm comparing the sternum to the pelvis, the most obvious thing that stands out to me is that the sternum is above the pelvis. Now that I've come up with my non-anatomy word for, for what I put in this blank, now I'll use my fancy directional terms to fill it in. We already did our comparison between the sternum and the vertebrae, front versus back. There's also a comparison here between the sternum and the humerus. The humerus is your upper arm bone. Notice that the humerus is farther away from the middle of the body. What directional term would we use for that? The last set of comparisons I'm having you make is the humerus compared to the radius. Alarm bells should be going off in your mind when we think about the humerus and the radius. They should be going off because these are two structures on an arm. Remember that when we talk about two structures on an arm or two structures on a leg, we have to use proximal or distal. Use these statements to quiz yourself. Or better yet, think about those regional terms that you were learning. See if you can't use the regional terms as a guide or as a place for you to make some of these comparisons. How does the thoracic region compare to the abdominopelvic region? How does the brachial region compare to the anti-brachial region? If we can bring these two ideas together, we'll be in really good shape.